Hey everyone, Kay here on the homestead in Tennessee. It's going down to 37, maybe even lower tonight. But here are a few clips of what we did today. My helper was here, Randy, and he did most of the heavy lifting. Wow, those two are still fighting. Oh, I am having a bit of a thing with BJ and Patch. It's not getting any better as you will see in a clip. But the flower garden is fantastic, believe it or not, right here on October the 8th. I have not put one drop of rain, rainwater from the cistern on the flower garden since these plants went in the ground. All those rains in July prepared them and now they're huge. I have had a lot of damage from deer, mainly around the periphery. You can see all these things are chopped off. And unfortunately I missed this and it got eaten. He's got eaten. I should have harvested those. I could harvest that one today. And maybe that one. But I was hoping I would have a lot to harvest in one day. But now we're getting frost tomorrow. So I don't know. You see, there's a potential calyx on each of these. Because they got eaten by deer, the plant is putting out more leaves at each joint, as well as a calyx. But what will happen from the frost, you know, if it gets down to 30 tomorrow night, as and this one all got eaten back a while ago because it's already spread it out. Yeah, see, they just cleaned off the whole side. Oh, brother. This is an aster. This is a, I think it's called a blue. It's more of a lilac color. And it waited all season to bloom, and now it just pops right before the first frost. <laughs> Look, there's two bumblebees right there. And these little moths. Look at the yellow is the pollen. So it's just a little black bee. I still have a few cosmos blooms and a few zinnias. Where'd you go? That's a Gulf Fritillary. Land. Land. There's two of them flying around. Oh, there's three. This is the Sweet Annie in full bloom. Oh, it smells wonderful. I'll be taking some branches in the house just to dry for the scent. That's about seven feet tall. Just airy, fairy, gorgeous, and smells divine. These zinnias blow me away. They're so gorgeous. Oh man. What is this? These are pretty. That's a mum of some kind. Oh, and this mum is about to bloom too. Oh, I've got to cover these up. Hi, BJ. 
What are you and Tiger doing? Huh? What are you and Tiger doing? Huh? It's so incredibly dry. We're in our 26th day without rain that he has scattered the cover crop seeds and then he's putting a fine layer of hay on the top and watering it in and hopefully it'll take. The only plants that are down there that are left are two little rows of okra, which he says will still produce after a light frost, and the cotton which is hopefully going to survive the frost as well. I've got a million marigold flowers and eggplant and the last row of Egyptian spinach and two or three rows of blue spice basil. Careful. Car. Car. Careful. Let's go up and see if we've got any blooms on the cranberry hibiscus. Not holding my breath because tomorrow night, frost. Can't believe this grew the whole season and never bloomed. These tomatoes, which I've completely ignored, are actually growing back. Now, it's just not possible to cover them, but look how healthy. Even got blooms. They look so healthy. Many of them died, but look how many I've got. But now we're getting into frost, so look at all those blooms. Okay, let's check out the red Malabar spinach because that is gone. Oh, well, the deer decided they liked it and they ate the whole back side. I wondered why it looked less dense. That's, that's disappointing. I guess not surprising, but definitely disappointing. The whole back side was just sheared off like a haircut. All these are the seeds developing. So it's going to have a million seeds. But what I need to do is I need to get the leaves that are still here harvested and get them in my freezer so that I can enjoy something nutritious this winter. They didn't do, they didn't come back in here, it doesn't look like because there was plenty to eat on the front side. Ah, they did the same thing up here. No surprise there. But this was the thicker one with more leaves to start with. But you see, they just cleaned it up. Oh, look at that tomato. I love it when the blueberry bushes start turning orange and red. So pretty. This is actually, I looked this up. I don't remember the name of it at the moment. I think it's called blue stem. But I am going to actually move this down to the prairie, down to the meadow, because it's good for wildlife but it's at the end of my blueberry my blueberries and so I want to plant a couple more plants here I'm going to be removing this whole structure because it's only good to have the scr the structure for that one month while it's producing berries and the rest of the time it's just something ugly to look at so this is coming out and I will just use netting 
or something. Loyal, I don't know exactly what, but I'm gonna take this out. It got mangled in last year's snow. It's not much to look at. Let's check out the most stupendous hibiscus. Let's see where it's, yeah, it's, it's winding down, it's dying back. Last year it died all the way back to the ground. So we'll see if it does that. Last year was the first year. Same thing happened with the fig. Last year this died all the way back to the ground. I know. Hi, Patch. Whoa. All right. Play nice. Anyway, this looks fantastic at the moment when my fig in the pot doesn't look so great. However, oh, what do you know? <laughs> hey, you finally got the message, huh? You're going to try to make a fig here in October? This is a really invasive weed. It's, this is the only time it looks pretty, but it is so invasive. It covers everything. PJ, PJ, you enjoying the shade? Something else that survived being decimated early on is the lemon verbena. One of my favorite smells in the garden. That and Sweet Annie. Oh, and look, it's blooming right here at the end of the season. This is a mulberry bush that was decimated early on and got a cage on it so that it's surviving. It got eaten just like the persimmon got eaten. But look at these tomatoes growing back at the end of the season. All these vines. This particular plant was a volunteer and it it produced a lot but nothing was really edible. It needs support. Oh, there's another nice one. Oh, and this, of course, is Johnson grass, which needs to come out. Hey! No fighting! Stop it! Those two fight a lot. Concerns me. Why can't you simply play? You're bullying her. This is my Sheffield mum. It's a rare mum that was sent to me by Sharon at Sharon's Natural Gardens. It never got in the ground and it's just about to bloom right here <laughs> before the first frost, but I can I can get that out of the cold. The other thing is the passion fruit. This thing is loaded. There's usually a bee waiting as soon as I take off the cover. So I want as many of these passion fruits I can get. So I'm going to keep covering it up or get it in out of the cold. This is my third favorite smell in the garden. This is cardamom. And the leaves, oh, the leaves smell so good. What's that, a stink bug? Yep. Not anymore. Just wanted to show you my little work area here because I'm still nursing a bad back. And I am set up here going through my garlic. I decided rather than disassembling these and saving seeds that I would make a little flower arrangement in my house. So I'm cleaning up the garlic and I'm almost done with that. And then here are some more sunflowers. They're drying. Here are the last of the beans and I've got to take those off the vines. But I am doing these jobs sitting down today. Oh when I think I've got them all. 
Every time you look at that pile, you see another one. The beans are so hidden. These are the Rio Zappe beans, and as they mature, they go from green to purple. Got a couple of tomatoes here. If I'm lucky, these will ripen and be good. The last two weren't, but maybe these two will. Anyway, isn't this a lovely bouquet? These are the hardneck garlic that sprouted, you know, at the end of my garlic. And I finally got them cleaned out today, as you saw. And the beans are cleaned out. All the beans are, and peas are gone down there. I've actually got a few over here. And I'm debating on what I really have to cover right now. If it's only going down to 37, I can get away with frost blanket and not have to carry them inside because they're still blooming. I don't know what it is about these things that are st starting to bloom right here before our first frost, but that's the way it is. So thank you so much for watching this channel. I hope you enjoyed it. Getting a look at you know, what's still growing in the first week in October and come back for more. Don't forget to hit that bell for notifications when you subscribe so you won't miss an upload. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Take care and I'll see you next time. That's normally white. <laughs> wow, you got some cleanup to do.